All right. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Sounds like we're in the Thunderdome. Good evening. Welcome. How is everyone today? My name is Jason Levine. Lovely to see you here on the Friday Masterclass here on Adobe Live. And uh, as you can see, today's setup is a little bit different because over the last couple of weeks, as, we've, as many of us have been working remotely and kind of dealing with all of that, a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of people kind of do different types of streams and kind of relaxation streams and break away from the norm type streams. And I thought, well, what a perfect opportunity to do that with a little bit of music, all the while also leveraging some auditions so we can do some live recording too. So as always on these master classes, we've got our live interactive chat. We're coming to you today on Adobe Live as well as doubling over on Twitter Periscope. So lovely to see all of you. Hello. Thank you so much for joining. Ashi. What is up, Tim? Yes, <laughs> slightly different lower third today. Uh, hello, Robert. Hello, Tunch. All right. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Des. Great to see you all. So what we're going to do uh, a little bit differently than normal again is, well, first of all, I've got this uh, remote setup here that I did with the piano. And I think you're going to like this because, as you can see here, uh, what we've got is, so we've got uh, the keyboard here so you can really see the whole piano. Now, this is... We've got uh, cameras up here. I tend to be very physical. Things could move. I've done a bunch of testing over the last few days. They don't seem to have moved very much, but hopefully, uh, hopefully everything will stay still. <laughs> but um, kind of in the spirit of what I was talking about, I'm going to start out with a little just kind of a little relaxation. And you know, anybody who plays music, just like a sport, working out, you gotta you gotta stretch a little. So I'm going to do a little finger, finger, finger stretch <laughs> and uh, a little vocal stretching as well. Now, this vocal exercise that I'll do is also really nice. Uh, it's kind of a good meditation. Um, I think I may have mentioned before that I started doing a training course, speaker training course inside of Adobe, and uh, it's all about breathing. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Tanya. That's right, Tim. Hey, Howard. <laughs> and of course, everything here is brought to you in beautiful stereo, stereo glory, mic'd with a matched pair. AT4041s. I've had them for decades. that minor to us. I mean, why don't I just go diminished while we're at it? Marco Russell, what's happening? Just what we need, a ginger. Nice. All right. So I'm going to get started. And, uh, you know, I, um, when I'm doing my kind of morning meditation and rehearsals, I tend to go straight through, so I'll, I'll break in between songs, and I thought that the first half would be um, minus this first one, which is one of my earliest children's songs called Just Play Music. Uh, we do some random, random, slightly unknown rock songs in the beginning, and then the second half, I'll do some of my children's songs. I think I've mentioned here that I write a lot of children's songs. You can find them all over, Spotify, Apple Music, and everywhere. And they're fun. And if you've got kids at home, I don't know if they'll think, think they're so fun. Mine sometimes do.
Sing along like any other day You're feeling so bored You've got so much time So use it There's so many various things to do But there's just one thing's gonna do it for you You've got to just play No difference whether in good times or bad There's no better time to prove it If nothing is right and everything's wrong There's never been a better time to play your song Because you've got to just play music Nice. Tunch is playing the guitar behind us. Marco Russell. Dana, what's happening? Why with Echo Toga? I mean, why not? You gotta be. You gotta do the Echo. <sighs> oh, thanks, Eric. Hello, Claire. Hello, Steve. And back to a little slow.
some very rare, obscure Beach Boys songs. Now, I was talking yesterday on, um, on the uh, regular Adobe live stream how I was very influenced by Bach. Who was really, in the words of Jack Bruce, the king of bass players. And this song really kind of has that. Brian Wilson. This is from 1967. Steve, yes, that is a hidden gem off of the um, uh, Wild Honey album, which was actually uh, remixed entirely um, last year or two years ago. It's an album that I always enjoyed, but I, the mix was always, that was kind of where Brian stepped back a bit. And uh, the mixes were never, they were always muddy. Well, that's very nice, Steve Fortin. I like that. So one thing that, uh, you know, for relaxation, if you, I don't know if you ever go to those, like, Spotify channels. So whenever they have piano music, always major seven chords. Oh, Jack Watson, I feel you. Hopefully this is providing a little uh, Somebody was asking what kind of piano this is.
It is a samic. Say mix. This one's from 1989. Um, I really like pianos with very intense action, and I like I like them to be a bit brighter. One, because I play a lot of bass notes, right? And also because um, uh, they're just the kind of music I play. I don't I don't do classical any, anymore. I might segue into a piece here, there, later. I don't know if my friend uh, Amy Ferrati is watching. got a recording going on here, about 18 minutes in. Thank you, Claire Louise Holt. Quinn Stevenson, turning the monitors to 11. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I 
Very obscure. I got on this Beach Boys kick last summer. Rediscovery. But not the classics or the well knowns. I always try and go for the obscure. This one is called Honking Down the Highway. <laughs> Howard, <laughs> I'm out of breath for you, brother. Ah, oh, thanks. Hey, <clears throat> it's very dry in here today. <laughs> but you know, that's my, uh, you're hearing my warm up here. John Lennon very famously once said, you can't make music at 8 or 10 or whatever it is, a.m. It's very, very true, actually. <laughs> Never do sessions this early in the morning. He's got to wake up, you know even though I've been up for five hours already. All right, so we're just at the, uh, almost at the top of the hour here, which means we've got approximately 30 minutes left. Brian was feeling cheeky on that one. Yes, he was. He, there's so many, so that's from 77, and that's on a record called um, Beach Boys Love You, and uh, that's, that was kind of a, 
It was, a, it was a, a comeback album of sorts. They had done one before, 16 big ones. Actually, that was the first comeback, 76. And then 77 is supposed to be Brian's return to producing. And it's a fantastic record. And it's very, very strange and has Moog synthesizers all over it. And it's, the mix is really phenomenal. His brother Carl did the mix. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting record. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of like early, uh, believe it or not, like new wave and Brit pop artists. I want to say even like New Order and stuff reference this record because it has all of these Moog synthesizers and they're using them as bass parts and it's just, it's really something else. Really worth checking out. Yes, Tim, that's the warm up. <laughs> all right, so let's do one more. With the exception of maybe that one, Fire and Water. Anybody know that one? Who's watching? 1970, do you know who did that? Extra points in my enduring love. Anybody? <clears throat> it's by Free. This one, which I played years ago, Tim will remember. I don't see Jan Eric today. Jan Eric might remember. Johnny Cash. He would have been good at that one, actually. No, it was a group called Free. They had a very big hit in 1970 called uh, All Right Now. That's what you probably may remember. This one was a huge hit in 1987-88, although done in a totally different version. I'm just going to get into it, and you'll, you'll know what it is. Need more water for this. This thing is so precariously placed. I'm doing a pretty good job. Somebody commented before, you can see I'm really into it. I mean, I am very physical when I play. And I used to have this amazing teacher when I was a kid who used to say, you know, if you're not gonna be in it, then just don't bother. You need to be in it. This is why I, I don't, I mean, I have keyboards, but I, I break them because you can't, and I really, my whole body goes in there. I mean, I'm sweating right now. Didn't know Gandalf could play this good. I take that as a compliment, friend. Darn right. <laughs> you know, that is my, my nickname is Gandalf the Great, Gabriel. So very, very nice. Shauna, hey, 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 what's up?
Mouthful of hair. <laughs> Lost my phones. Woo! Eunesis Martin. What a great song for the saloon in Westworld. <laughs> love that. Gandalf and the Roses. I love that. Thank you, Steve. Shauna, I agree. We might start doing this. Jurgen, the good old Twitch days. Ah, yes, Jurgen, you remember. That was a good time. Mm-hmm. Boogie you, Carol. I will do my best. And thank you again, Gabriel. I tell you to cadaver. Ooh. All right. Okay. Yeah, you know, this is the perfect time to start picking up those instruments again. During, uh, while we're all kind of at home and quarantined. <laughs> remix of this is coming out in less than three weeks. April 17. It's, gonna be, it's fat and loud. You can listen to it now on Spotify and everywhere, but I wasn't happy with the, with the master. I'm very disappointed, so I just stopped promoting it. It's called Fear the Q-Tip. So this is the kids, the kids' 20 minutes here. Songs for the children. This is a rock song. So if your kids like rock, you might have a chance. Todd Rundgren, Steve, you're, you're feeling my influences for sure. Biggest piano influences. Uh, 
he's definitely one of them. Something, anything. Heard that so early on, and just that whole record production influence too. Um, actually, I was thinking about it before this, and, and McCartney, surprisingly, I mean, he's an amazing pian pianist and bassist, and huge influence for both. Uh, Billy Preston, actually, is probably one of my bigger, biggest influences on piano in, in, in the rock world, anyway. And you may notice I do a lot of... I do a ton of swells. That's why it's so physical. That's why I break so many keys on keyboards, because I'm always... You know, and uh, that comes straight from playing Hammond organ, which I also do, so, you know... Ray Charles, I mean, of course. And Billy Preston did play with the Beatles. No, you were correct. And he also played with the Stones, Steve. He was actually on tour with the Stones in the mid-70s. And yes, he very famously is the only non-Beatle to be credited on Beatles singles, Get Back and Don't Let Me Down, and famously played on the Rooftop concert, January 3rd, 1969, all of which will be shown and re-released in Peter Jackson's new Get Back film about the Let It Be era September 2020. <laughs> he said in one continuous rant. Okay, so that's my latest one called Fear the Q-Tip. Uh, this one actually is very appropriate. <laughs> Dana, I fear the Q-Tip. Yes, don't push it too far into your ear. Uh, very appropriate for now because I keep seeing all these tweets about people on their Zoom calls and, uh, you know, sans pants. So this is one that I normally, that I said, I mean, all of these songs are almost verbatim written as things I've said to my children. This one, while it's that, could also be something you might say to your colleagues right now. It's called Put Your Pants On. Oh yes, a fine New Zealander, my friend. sung this in forever. God, I hope I remember all the words. Put your pants on, put your pants on, put your pants on. Don't make me say it again. Put your pants on, put your pants on, put your pants on. your sneaky snack put your pants on put your pants on put your pants on you better cover up that crack put your pants on cause your daddy told ya put your pants on 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 Put your pants on, put your pants on, put your pants on. 
Put your pants on, put your pants on, put your pants on. Nico, it's different live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should write one for the teenagers. Mm. Right, put your pants on would be a perfect time for people to discover these trees. Like, what? How did you? You knew. All right. So here's one. This will be. Um, this is something that actually also premiered on the Twitch streams, which seems like a hundred years ago. Uh, it has now been properly recorded, same time as uh, Fear the Q-Tip. I only ever performed it once on the stream. This is another perfect one for being at home, right? Starting to get a little, little edgy around people. And, you know, I tend to write things, right? my kids' songs are about, you know, stuff that my kids do, all kids do. Usually little annoyances good life lessons. This one's called Open Mouth Chomper. It's about, you know, people who eat with their mouth open. Don't you be an open mouth chomper leaving crumbs behind is gross and no good. Don't you be an open mouth chomper close your mouth when you're chewing your food. Do you some good chewing I can't wait for this one to come out. Deadpool called out that song for being note for note. Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> Julia, you're very kind. 
Danish, thank you. All right. Ahmed, thank you very much. All right. I think we got time for like two more. So that was about food and chewing with your mouth open. I have two offenders of that. One, one in my household. Sorry, a little snot there. So this one is, um, again, you know, think back to your old childhood. Your own childhood, I mean. Teeth brushing. Do kids really ever like teeth brushing? I mean, it'd be awesome if they did. Mine don't. And this one is called Pirate Teeth. So you don't get pirate teeth You gotta brush them every day So you don't get pirate teeth They will fall out of your mouth And it will be quite a scene Turning multicolored yellow brown shades of green When you are pirate teeth Ha ha When you are pirate teeth Scurvy's not unnerving When you have pirate teeth Because you help yourself to servings Of whatever you please But without a daily dosage Of your vitamin C Samuelson, I hope that's the case. Love it. Ah, oh, har, yar. Yes, Eric, that is actually, I didn't give the whole, uh, the whole backstory there, but yeah, I was very inspired by a schoolhouse rock, right? And I think Tim said it in the chat before, that was my inspiration, because the kids' songs that I had to endure when my kids were young, which was not Schoolhouse Rock, I played them that, but like the shows and stuff that were on were just maddening, you know. It was maddening to listen to. And I tried to write things that, like Schoolhouse Rock, that were, you know, appropriate, but that wouldn't drive parents totally crazy.
unfortunately, we've just about run out of time. So I'll just kind of end it with this instrumental version of a old Tim Harden song. That'll do it, friends. So until next time, have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of today. We've got the Illustrator Creative Challenge coming up with Mr. PT. So until then, have a good one, and I'll see you again on the stream. Stay, stay, stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.